Hi everyone, I am Anakshi, and I welcome you all to the Kastu. So currently, India is enjoying the success of Chandrayaan three mission, where we became the first country to land on the South Pole. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi, apart from congratulating the whole team, has acknowledged the special role the women played in this mission. And you know, more than hundred women directly or indirectly were involved in this mission in conceptualizing it, in designing it, and further more activities. So today we will be learning about role of women in science and technology, which is not limited to this mission only. You know, women have been involved in the science and technology things since ancient times, and today we will be learning about some exceptional women. So beginning a, a little bit introduction, women have been. Playing an important role in scientific growth of India, and as I said, they have been playing this role since the ancient times. And recent success of Chandrayaan three mission, as we have discussed, mission is a stellar example of this role which have, women have played in the scientific development of our country. But you know, their role is not limited to this mission only. There have been various other. Missions where women have played significantly important role in scientific mission. They have been contributing significantly since ages, but you know their role is still undermined. Why? Because this this draconian concept where we consider women intellectually inferior class, and we have been profoundly fostering this thought throughout the world. Women are intellectually inferior, and they can't understand science and technological things, and they can't uh, work in this field. So this is the thought which many human beings have. And uh, if we have uh, do a brief analysis of Indian history, it indicates that in the early Vedic period, women used to enjoy a prestigious status of education and science. And few example of them are Gargi Vachanakavi. Dilavati and Maitri, they have been mentioned as exceptional in their fields. Gargi was considered a great philosopher and scientist who used to do debates and all. And then Dilavati was <coughs> daughter of famous mathematician Bhaskaracharya, so she was also involved on these scientific things, mathematics, and all those. So, so you see, women have been contributing since ancient period. They are all they is all women belong to ancient period of India. So they have been contributing since ancient period, but their contribution less talked about or their role is very undermined. Now this complex interaction in recent times. Uh, um, there was not much development in this role of women during the medieval ages but if we talk about the modern times there <coughs> these interaction between science and gender in india is highlighted in works one work is lilavati's doctor uh, daughters which was published in 2008 and the other is lab uh, lab hopping which was published in 2023 only. so <coughs> there have been some notable women as i said who tried to break this Glass ceiling and few women who have made this remarkable impact. We'll be learning about. So number one is Anandi Joshi. So she was married at the age of nine and be, she became a mother at the age of fourteen. So she is Anandi Joshi. She is a doctor from Japan and she is a doctor from Syria. This is very very old photograph. And uh, if we talk about Anandi Joshi, she was uh, she was married at the age of nine. She became a mother at, at the age of fourteen. But the baby boy he could not survive infancy and died due to lack of timely care, barely ten days after birth. And this incident deeply impacted her, and this tragedy spurred her to study about medicines. In eighteen eighty three, she began her medical training at Women's College of Penn. And she graduated in 1885 and became first doctor as well uh, and physician in charge in princely state of Kolhapur. But she passed away at a very young age of 20. Now, second woman is Kadambini Ganguly, a doctor who broke the myth. She was also a doctor. She graduated in Western medicine from Calcutta Medical College in. And she was among one of the first two women in India to be eligible to practice medicine. And also later, she was involved in Indian freedom struggle as well. And 
also a doctor <coughs> at a time when women were not allowed to study so that is a remarkable thing moving on third woman is janaki amal she was a pioneering botanist and she uh, passed away in 1984 so she was born in 1897 dr janaki amal was india's first female botanist and she was also the first indian woman to receive a doctorate degree in botany and from us she used her expertise to develop uh, sugar cane uh, sugar cane crops which were suited <coughs> which suited to india's climate and there is a small flower variety which is named after her so she also left a remarkable impact next is anna mani let's know about her she conducted research produced a number of papers and made contribution to field of meteorological uh, instrumentation in areas of solar radiation known as well as wind energy and she was known as the weather women of india as you can uh, see this is also a very old photograph going on dr iravati karve she studied about humans and she studied about specially about the kinship organization in india and revolutionized further research for it going on <coughs> see so this was all about uh, the women which made first and remarkable impact in their respectable field now recently to in the present she is dr v r lalitambika and she is the project director of gaganyaan mission so these two ladies uh, momita datta and nandini harinath they were associated with mangalyaan mission or the mars orbiter mission so you have been seeing that there are lots and lots of women who have been associated with science research fields technological fields since the ancient times during the modern times even at a time when women were not allowed to study or their education was not promoted at all and <coughs> even if they were married at a young age some of them were supported by their husband now in india presently 16.6% of researchers who are directly involved in research and development activities are women and according to dst which is department of science and technology most recent research and development state so according to dst's research and development statistics 16.6% women are involved in this research thing which is very less i guess and <clears throat> why they face the face there are number of challenges first of all uh, the foremost challenge they face is that at least they should study they face challenge about about their education needs about taking their own decision in the field of education let's see some other hindrances in their growth first of all it's deeply ingrained patriarchy and lack of representation where they don't have their own voice they are not allowed to take their own decision let alone be moving on government indifference third is this very common problem of sexual harassment and unfavorable wor working condition which hinder their growth they don't prefer to work in those areas as many <coughs> as very less uh, this is more compared to you know the very less women involved in this there are family related problems including marriage parental responsibilities you know the dual weight of that work life balance manager home manager office these activities relocation because the spouse job is transferable a few hindrances which which stops women from you know working or especially working in these research field now there have been some government initiative which have been taken in taken in this field let's know about them first is knowledge involvement in research advancement through nurturing or popularly known as the kiran scheme next is this curie program which is consolidation of university research and <coughs> that research should be conducted through innovation and excellence in women university next is indo us fellowship for women in stem and this stem stands for science technology engineering mathematics and medicine and moving on lastly vigyan jyoti scheme which encourages girl students at school level specifically from 9 to 12 standard to pursue education and career in the field of science and technology 
so i guess this was all about this topic and you find i really hope you find the session interesting if you find it interesting please like the video and do subscribe to the channel thank you